Good afternoon and welcome to a webinar from Lean Shopping University. Uh, my name is Therese and uh, I'm going to guide you through this conversation this afternoon. Uh, we're going to learn more about our master's program in chemistry and I'm here with two guests who I will let you introduce yourselves in a minute. Um, just a few, a few have minor housekeeping um, things I'd like to go through with you. This webinar is being recorded. Uh, it will be available on our website either through our webinars page or on the program page. Um, we are going to be talking for about 20 to 30 minutes about the program. Um, after that, we will open up for questions um, and the recording part will only be our, our conversation. So the question section will be for those of you who are joining us live. Um, there's two options below. Um, you can use the Q&A or the chat. The chat is for you to say hi to each other, you know, where you're from and, and, and uh, you know, anything else you want to say to each other. The Q&A is where we will look uh, to answer questions later on. Um, so don't forget to put your questions in there. And if you have questions at a later date, um, just hit reply to any of the messages we've sent you, um, or you can um, connect with us through the contact us function on our program page. I think that's done with the, with the, the boring start. <laughs> Let's introduce my guests. Um, would you like to start? Yes. Uh, so my name is Pam Brian Pofu, and um, I'm a PhD student in materials chemistry here at Lean Shopping University. So I am here for this webinar as an alumni of this master's program in chemistry. Thank you. And, and my name is Henrik Peterson. I'm a professor of inorganic chemistry here in Lean Shopping and I'm a program coordinator. Brilliant, thank you, thank you. Um, so let's start with, with learning a bit more about the program. I mean, wh why do we offer this program and wh why do we feel there is a need for a program in chemistry? Chemistry is going to solve everything. Uh, essentially, <laughs> there, there is not a single problem within the climate crisis that chemistry will not be a part of solving, for one. Uh, there is not a, a single disease in the world that chemistry will not be a part of solving. Uh, chemistry is vital to making all electronics that we have in the world. Uh, chemistry is vital to making all electric vehicles, etc. Et so chemistry is, is enormously important for the future and for, for mankind. Um, and we, we believe we do very good chemistry in lint shipping. So we really want to do a, a master's program where we give our bachelor students a chance to, to develop themselves further into better chemists. Okay. And how come you chose this program and Lin Shipping University? Yeah, well, um, for a start, for start, I think uh, I really like this program be uh, because I was looking for a place abroad, of course, to do, like, to advance my, my, my studies. And I was looking around and then a couple of years ago, I think three, just about three years ago, and I so happened to bump into one of these webinars that you do, <laughs> and that was yourself and <laughs> my to-be supervisor, Professor Henrik Pedersen. And uh, it was a funny story because, I mean, up to now, whenever I think about it, I always laugh about it with my wife. Like, yeah, so this is how it happened. And because I was looking for a place to study, uh, to advance my education, I was looking almost everywhere. And bumped into this webinar, I liked the program, applied, and I got a place, and here, here am I. And now you're forced to stand here. Yes. I know, it really is kind of, you know, this is what happens. You apply to the program, you do the program, you do a PhD, and then you have to be here. Yeah. So <laughs> it's poetic, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so how come, um, you know, you're, you're talking about this kind of chemistry is, is everywhere. Uh, you know, what are, the, what are the kind of, I mean, I suppose within the program, you can't look at everything. Are there specific kind of focus areas? So the, the idea with the program is the year one is uh, coursework, mm -hmm. where we give you a broad introduction of lots of things, taking it to a, a higher level compared to your bachelor, but still trying to overview a lot of things within chemistry. Uh, we also try to not talk about the traditional chemical subdisciplines like organic chemistry and organic chemistry and lytical chemistry, but instead we try to focus on the molecule because chemistry is all about molecules. So we're looking at from a molecular perspective, really, how is the molecule held together? How is this molecule made? How is it used? And how can we look at it with various techniques? 
so that we know we made the right stuff and that we know we're using it in the correct way. Um, so that's our first year, really broad introduction with a lot of coursework and making you, making you understand chemistry better. And then the second year, the idea is that you do a master thesis. So for one full year, you do essentially high, high level research. You can be part of a research group at the university, uh, as Pamburai was. Uh, so he did his master thesis in my group. Uh, he was working for a full academic year with, with one big scientific problem. He solved it. It's now published. Um, so that's, that's our, the, the way we see it is that one broad year to, to understand a lot of chemistry and then one year where you really specialize and, and you, you dive in. Dive and, into various. Exactly. What did you do previously before you came here and before you, you wanted to pursue a, a master's in chemistry? Uh, my background is in chemistry. I have a bachelor's in applied chemistry. So after I graduated from my bachelor, I went into industry, worked there literally uh, four or five years. And then thereafter, I was like, mm, I think I'm okay with this. I need something new. And that's when I started to look for a master's program to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um I'm thinking you, you were telling us a bit about the, the, the first year. Uh, we've actually got a couple of slides that I thought we could look at. Um, if they come up on the screen. So you can, you can see here the, uh, the, the courses that are included. Um, what do we mean by HT1 and HT2 to start with? Right, so uh, HT is, well that's from Swedish, H uh, is, uh, is, is from the Swedish word höst, which means fall. So uh, HT1 and HT2, those are the two reading periods of the fall semester. So the semester is divided into two reading periods. Uh, so you will have a exam period in approximately towards the end of October. Uh, where you do uh, your exams of the two courses that have finished. And then you can see there is one course uh, in, in blue there called Applied Chemistry where it goes throughout your whole full semester. And then you start again in early November with uh, two new courses that are finishing up, the reading of the courses finishing up just before Christmas and then just after New Year's you will have those exams. And then you go on to the spring semester and spring is Swedish means it's vår, starting with a V, so that's VTs. Split, okay. It's the spring semester. So that, and each semester is about 20 weeks. So each yeah, exactly. block is about 10 weeks. Exactly. And then you have an exam. Yep. Kind of if we, after chemical bonding, for yeah, example. Yeah, you have like one, one week of exam period. Uh, and if you do study this, you will have two exams, uh, two written exams, one in chemical bonding and one in nanotechnology. Um, and then it, after Christmas, you will have, you do not have an exam in material synthesis, there you have hand in exercises. You will have one that is due uh, just after Christmas. Super molecular chemistry has an exam. The applied chemistry course does not have an exam, it has a, a written assignment and a, in a presentation for the group. And the, is that an individual project or do you do that as a group? You do that individually and then I think you have, um, or I know you have uh, group projects within super molecular chemistry for instance. Okay, okay. And, and um, so you basically, when you start, you read three courses in parallel. Exactly. Yeah. So what did you think when you started? You know, you, you've, you've done all this. Oh, was it similar when you did it? Yeah, it was, except for, I think there's one course that just, just changed, changed the name slightly, but mm. it's basically the same thing. Uh, the growth and characterization, it used to be called analytical methods in material science, but it's the same thing anyway. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it's exactly the same. Yeah. Yes. And what did you think of the courses? I mean, was it, was it a different way of teaching, a different way of learning? Or? It was, of course. Um, when I started, the first course that we started with was chemical bonding. Uh, it was a bit tough, I would say. And, uh, but we, we managed. I mean, it's, it's, it's doable mm. because it's, it's set in such a way that every student will be able to do it. So we managed to do it. And, but I mean, in terms of teaching, is slightly different from what I was used to. Mm -hmm. In which sense? Um, in the sense that um, most of the courses that I used to, I did before, like for my bachelor, they, it's like you just read, you are given notes, you read, and then you prepare for the final exam. Mm. So there is not this like kind of uh, options, like in this case, there's certain courses that have exams, others that like you read through a whole range of things and mm. At the end of the day, maybe at the end of the course, maybe you do a summary of some sort or write a report, which is ca kind of comprehensive. It forces you to read like 
a broader, uh, like broader topics as compared to just reading for you to pass an exam. Mm, mm. Yeah. And what about uh, group work? Because I think that's something I hear from from others that you know it's it's quite a Swedish thing. Um, how how was that? I mean, was that a different, a new experience? Yes, uh, because I think I never in my bachelor I don't remember doing a, any course that I would do in collaboration with somebody else in pairs or in threes or whatever. No. So I think that was the first time that we did assignments and uh, some sort of exams in, mm. in groups. And I, I, I liked it because, um, for example, you're given a very like a broad topic and maybe you're three or four in a group. Each one of you has their own special like expertise, kind of. Uh, they are good in their own way. So when you combine, you sit down, they explain something to me that I don't know. He explains something to me that I don't know. So at the end of the day, you have this like really compact uh, presentation that you can make if it's a presentation Students or a report. Students kind of driven learning anyway. Exactly. I mean, it's like you learn from each other, not yes. just from your, your teachers. True. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds, it sounds you know, like a, a, a good way of, of kind of cementing the knowledge and, and, and bringing in different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see a bit more about the uh, the courses. Um, so, you've done your 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 first semester, but also I'd like to point out if there are three uh, parallel programs, when you start your first year, is is it a slow kind of few weeks where, or is it like you have to get going, you have to start working? You have to get going from the beginning. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because exams. Are, I think the first exams you're gonna write them around. The October, end of October thereabout, and you have to start in August, so you don't have time to waste. I mean, yeah. you just have to mm -hmm. hit the ground running right you away. Got, it's because I suppose yeah. it, because it's a 10-week block, yes. you, you have that. So yeah. a good thing is to, to arrive, I mean, you have to be here for uh, the roll call, but come a bit early, because I think there's, there's a lot of fun stuff going on, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of things to get familiar with, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you're in a new country. Um, but definitely, you know, get focused on your, on your coursework. Um, from the beginning. Yes. Mm. Uh, let's see again on the uh, on the courses. So we have mm. all these uh, these courses, and then these are compulsory. Yes. Uh, so we have uh, all of those uh, uh, in the fall semester are compulsory if you want to graduate from this program. And then the first part, the molecular synthesis and molecular analysis of the spring semester, those are compulsory if you want to graduate from this program, as is the growth and characterization of nanomaterials. Mm -hmm. Then there are two white boxes marked O slash V. That means here you have the chance to elect. There are, we have uh, suggested two courses that we know will work, uh, both from the, that it works within the program, is good for the students. It also will work with what the students know before and schedule-wise, etc. But uh, if you do not want to read them, you want to add in something else, you're free to do so on, on that second half of the spring semester. But it has to be chemistry related. It, it doesn't really have to be chemistry related. You could have something else as well, uh, as long as you have enough chemistry in your, in, in your master's and doing all the other, other chemistry courses plus your master thesis, it's going to be okay to have. Okay, uh, doing also. something different. Yeah. Um, so you've done that. So that's your entire, your first year mm -hmm. over and done with. Um, year two, uh, there are Three different options? Yes. So I, I also want to point out the, the reason why we have color-coded some of these courses is that those courses are especially, especially made for this master's program. So in the blue blue boxes, you're, you have only, uh, you're studying only together with other students with the master's program. And the white boxes, you study together with also master's students from other master's programs. So, uh, so you can, in the nanotechnology, for instance, study with applied physicists and um, biomedical engineering, etc. Okay, so that is another opportunity to get yes. different, completely so, different yeah, exactly, perspectives. Ex exactly. Oh. Exactly. Make friends as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's important. <laughs> yeah. And then year two, our main sort of option or the, the main plan is that you do 60 credit points, i.e. a full academic year of master thesis. Mm -hmm. You do that. Either, either you find a professor and you say, that, hi, you seem to be doing interesting stuff. Can I, can I work in your, in your group for a year? Or you, go, you can contact a company. You can, can contact professors abroad if you have special interests. Um, so that's okay. But you help the students find something or uh, they are expected to do we, that? We expect them to come to us and sort of ask. But 
either ask for help or ask for a project. Uh, in the applied chemistry course, there are lots of um, guest lecturers who give give like inspirational lectures on their research because that's all about how do, how do we apply chemistry to solve various problems. And from that course, lots of people find a lot of inspiration for what they want to do as their master thesis, and then they con can contact those lecturers, and either they can get them directly or they be uh, transferred to others. So that that's one option. The other option is if you want to do some more coursework, you, there is uh, already prepared option if you want to do 45 credit master thesis, you want to do 15, one half a semester extra coursework. If you want to do one full more semester of, of coursework, uh, you, there is the prepared option that you also can do a one semester master thesis. But they have to do one semester? They have to do at least one semester least master one semester. thesis, yes. Yeah. And also we have no other like chemistry courses at the master's level sort of prepared to just plug in. You can go to perhaps protein science a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can go to f physics if you have the correct mathematical background. Uh, some people go abroad and do one semester abroad just mm -hmm. to get a little bit more uh, sort of courses mm -hmm. under the belt. Um, what do most students do? I would say most students do, uh, it's, it's not as common as I thought it would be that they do one full year master thesis. However, everybody that I talked about said that was a really good decision because I really got a chance to learn and Pamburai was one of those. Mm. I talked to other students who did a half a year master thesis and they were like, yeah, so I only got really going and then it was time to finish. Mm -hmm. So my strong recommendation is that you take this chance to do one full year of essentially internship in a research group. You get to, you get to try out what it's like to be a researcher. You, you, you be, you're there at group meetings, literature seminars, you're in the lab and you together with others and you fail and you can try again and you can fail once more and you try again. It's so much time on your hands for full, one full year, so you really mm. get to do research. And to see whether it's for you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What did you do? What did you do in your year? Uh, in the second year, you mean? Uh -huh. Yes, I did a sixth credit thesis, uh, that's a full year. Mm -hmm. And I did that in Henrik Pedersen's group. Okay. Um, what, was, what was the, the research area? Uh, it was uh, materials chemistry, uh, so my thesis was about uh, designing and building an atomic layer deposition reactor and as well as uh, trying new precursors that we synthesize in the group. So I did some tests, analysis, depositions and everything. And yeah, it qu went quite well because I also managed to publish a paper out of it. So it was, That's really good. It was an interesting year. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you applied for a job in that research group. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's again. It's a funny story because I remember when I came when I was in my first year, I approached Henrik and I was like, "Yeah, I think I might need to do a PhD." <laughs> but I mean, that was over ambitious, I guess, because it was too early. I was just starting, but I I I felt like I I would love to do that. Um, so, but he was like, "Well, there's two things that you need to do. It's first you have to pass your courses." Then uh, second, we will see. We will see. We cannot talk about what's going to happen in a year from now. So when I did the applied chemistry course, which is the, the one that you do for the whole of the first mm -hmm. uh, se semester, um, I did something that was sort of inclined to this materials chemistry, thin, film, uh, thin films and, and, and stuff like that. So um, it was sort of easy for me to make a decision to say, for my master thesis, I would love to do this because I'd already s started doing this overview of stuff that I was going to do. So it was kind of easy. And did you do that, the, the applied chemistry? I mean, did you, did you choose that specific topic with a view to then doing your full Exactly, your exactly. So that, you kind of that was the idea. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. I kind of had a plan because when he said that uh, we cannot really tell what's going to happen for now, I was like, okay. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but at least let me prepare myself for. Yeah, if yeah. it happens, let me prepare myself, align myself with things that will matter mm, in the future. Mm. And it mattered. It mattered. Yeah. Well. And, uh, what, what I should perhaps add and clarify here is also that if you want to do a PhD in Sweden, you are employed by the university. Mm. So you're sort of a mix between a student and an employee at the university. And to be able to employ somebody, we need the funding to pay the salary. You're not allowed to just be a PhD student and 
and take pay the set, it, yeah. pay for it yourself. Mm. So that's why I couldn't really promise Pampray or anybody anything because I didn't know what grant was about to come in. Or and then I I, I was really lucky that during the spring when when Pampray was doing his master thesis, I, I I closed the deal with the company we were collaborating. We started collaborating with, and I said well, I have. A, great master student here, I think he could be a good PhD student. And then we closed the deal, the company me, and then Pamburai was hired as a PhD student. This is just a you know, perfect story how everything yeah. fits. <laughs> you had a plan from when you saw that webinar. Yeah. And I think our webinar was one of the first you know, I ever did. So, you know, so it's, it's, it's nice to be here again. Um, so I'm thinking the, the, this program, the title is Chemistry, mm -hmm. which I think is, is quite I wouldn't say generic, but chemistry can yeah. be a lot. Yeah. What sets this program apart from, say, a chemistry program at any other Swedish or other international university? My main answer would be that we try to really look at the molecule. Because um, a lot of other programs, they look, OK, this is advanced organic chemistry mm -hmm. master. So then, then you get really specialized into one field of chemistry. Uh, we try to avoid that, and the, the whole idea started when I was in, in the corridor, when we bu professors bumped into each other. How would we really like to teach chemistry? Well, the, the traditional subdisciplines of chemistry are more and more loose in, in the edges. You can find hardcore organic chemistry still, but it's so much collaboration between other chemical disciplines and material science and medicine so that we really wanted to give a broader view of chemistry and really look at... But the whole thing that connects us all the time is our molecules. So looking at from the molecular perspective, and I, I, I would say we're quite unique in doing that, not really caring about is this analytical chemistry, is organic synthesis. This is molecular synthesis, we say. We make a molecule and then we analyze a molecule. Of course, you will learn the same techniques but you will learn them from a different perspective and really just looking at how is the molecule used, how is the molecule held together, how we, do we analyze the molecule and how it's synthesized, and also connecting, well, the molecule has these kinds of bonds, then it's good for these kinds of applications. Or, or in other words, if you want to make a solar cell, for instance, what kind of molecule do you need to use? What kind of molecule do you need to make and how do you make it? So, looking at it from various different directions all the time. Okay, and this program, I mean, you know, there's several courses and there's the, the research uh, project you can do, but how is it? Is it seminars, lectures, lab time? I mean, I remember from mm. back in my school days, chemistry, we, we got to play around and make explosions and even though mm. we weren't supposed to, you know, it's, it's what, what's this program the, like? I would say first semester, fall semester, is a little bit of lab time, but it's a lot of theory. Mm -hmm. A spring semester, much more lab time. Lots and lots of lab time, because then you have the molecular synthesis and analysis courses. That's lots about lab. Uh, plus, they make the growth and characterization of nanostructures. But if you do one full year of master thesis, as one full year, you're in the lab from, from the morning till the evening. Mm. So in a way, you can see that it's more than half of the time in the master's program is actually lab time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you count the master thesis. Mm. And did you, did you enjoy that? I mean, how did you? Yeah, I did. Um, basically, I would get into the lab. I, I think I was, I was spending probably 90% of my time in the lab. I had a little corner in the office that I was doing, like, if I want to write some stuff, but I rarely used it. I was always in the lab, and I enjoyed it. I mean, mm. it was fun. And even as a student, you get to be hands-on. Yes. Not just kind of, you know, watching... The, the teachers do it, but actually doing it yourself? No, I would say um, I think almost all the labs that you do are not talking of lab time that I was when I was doing my thesis work. Mm. For my thesis work, it was like 100% hands-on, mm. kind of independent, doing your own research and, and things like that, but of course with the guidance of the supervisor. Uh, but the other labs that you do in pairs or in groups or in like for the whole class, um, it's independent as well. The, lab supervisors will just be there to guide you. Mm. Otherwise, you are there you to do there, it yourself. You get to do it. Yes. You actually get to do it yourself, yes. which I think is it's a really yeah. good. Um, so the, the students on this program, um, what kind of background do they have? You had a, a, a bachelor in, in what do you say? Chemistry. Applied chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the others, are they same, similar? Or? Very similar. Uh, the, the, the only requirement we have to be uh, 
so that you can start the program is a bachelor in chemistry. Mm -hmm. And we, we mix international students with students from Sweden and then mainly students from, from, from Linköping. And we have three ways of getting a bachelor in chemistry in, in Linköping. Either you go chemical biology, you do chemistry, or you do uh, very focused on analy analytical uh, engineering chemistry. Uh, all of those will get a bachelor. And so we have a mix of those students together with international students. And there are students from all over the world. They have had all sorts of sort of directions in their bachelor. Some of them have been mainly teaching chemistry. Some of them have really applied chemistry and biochemistry, etc. But as long as you have a bachelor in chemistry, you can start a program. Okay. Um, and what do most students end up doing afterwards? I mean, do they do they do a lot of people? do what you do? Um, do you remember the, the students you in your class? Yeah, um, I think we were a group of like 12, 13 uh, when we started and when we finished I think three or four of us are, have gone further to do PhDs mm -hmm. and I know three or four other colleagues that I know that are in industry and yeah working for I think two are working at a pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. uh, one other one is working at a, is it a budget or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I would say all that those that I know, they are already uh, doing something. They're doing something yeah. within that. Something in a third, a quarter, do PhD afterwards maybe or? I, I, I'm not sure exactly about a third or quarter, but we, we do have a, a good number doing a PhD afterwards. So that it's an excellent program to prepare yourself. And then, of course, you have to be lucky with funding, etc. Mm -hmm. um, we have lots of, as you say, as Pambrai says, there's a lot of uh, people at pharmaceutical industry. We have the National Forensic Center here in, in, in Linköping. So there's a lot of people going to forensic chemistry. Um, and some have been going towards teaching afterwards. I know uh, some alumni that are back in China and are chemistry teachers now at high schools, okay. etc. So. Okay, okay. Um, what about um, on the actual program? Back, back to being on the program again. What was the workload like? I mean, how did you, when you started, was it, you know, did you find that at the beginning because you kind of had a break from studying and you found, oh God, you know, there's a lot or? Uh, well, I would say the workload there is quite a bit of work, but for me, I was prepared mentally and I had told myself that I, I didn't get this by chance, so I was so much prepared for this. So uh, whatever workload that was coming my way, I could handle it. I mean, you have like is it 40 hours a week, roughly. Mm. Um, max, I would say, I say max because I know you can do it. Mm. In less than that, you can manage to do everything. I mean, the workload is evenly and fairly distributed. And is it mainly scheduled hours? So you'll you have lecture seminars, lab time, or is it self-study? I mean, how is the... We, we do expect you to read quite a bit of text, and it, we do expect you to work a lot with the material independently. Mm. Um, you do ha I think you have lectures more or less every day, Monday to Friday. So there are very few like empty days of the week. Um, there are, of course, a lot of project works that you need to working on, uh, sort of make, make sure that you don't do everything the last week because that will not work. So structure, structure, Stru structure, your, work. structure, structure, structure your work and, constant, and consider it as your full-time job mm. and you will manage to do it. You'll be, yeah. So no time for part-time work? Really. No, I, mean, I, no. I would not say no. that you yeah. have any time to do that. No. Yeah, for part-time work, I would say, for me, I did some, but never I never did it during my study time I did that like during vacations yeah. summer mm -hmm. breaks mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because uh, it's quite difficult I mean to balance the two yeah. going to work uh, I, I don't yeah. think that's possible so and also yeah. it's not it's not the easiest Sweden's not the easiest place to find a part-time job when you're a student so so not only that but also you know you see students who who uh, come here thinking that it's okay to work their way through college, for example, and it's it's kind of sets you up for failure. So I mm -hmm. think that's really you know a good point that it's you should study, you should be here study full time, and and that is about forty hours a week. Um, I'm thinking we should actually uh, see if there are any questions. Uh, I think there are. Yes, there are already. Um, before we move over to the questions. Um, 
I'm going to say goodbye to those who are watching this recording. Um, before I do that, I want to have one last thing from you. <laughs> what do you wish you had known before you came here? I mean, could, would you like to give Pam Buri of, what is it, three or four years ago? Yeah. What advice would you like to give him? Uh, well, there's not many things because, like I said, for me, I had kind of prepared myself. But there's a few, obviously, because it's a new place, so there's obviously going to be a few things. Uh, First thing is um, not to carry unnecessary clothing. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm coming from a home climate. I'm getting to Sweden. Some of the jackets that I think are like winter jackets are not even, you know. <laughs> so I think carrying yeah. unnecessary stuff yeah. is number one. Number two, in Sweden, everything is about queuing. I mean, you queue for almost everything. So mm. it's always good to prepare yourself ahead of time to like create an account on uh, for example, a housing company website, you accumulate points like a point a day. Mm. So by the time you come to Sweden, probably you have like 500 points and you stand a chance to get an apartment. If That's a really good yeah. point. So student, uh, student booster, the student booster, they uh, with them sign up before yeah. you know that you're coming here, before yeah. you've applied. Because, you know, every, every day is one cue point. So, yes. yes. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's, That's good. Yeah. Well, that's good tips. Thank and you. Yeah. of course, be prepared to bike. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can cycle. Yeah. Cycle. You yeah. can cycle, everywhere. Yeah. You can cycle um, everywhere. Usually, most students live in an area quite close to campus, and it takes, what, five, ten five minutes, minutes to cycle? Yeah, five yeah. minutes to cycle. Um, so, I think that's one of the first things the students do. They get a second hand bike because also a lot of other students are leaving. Um, so, they're willing, you know, they're happy to sell their things. Um, so, it's a, it's a good, you can get a lot of things second hand, good things second hand. Um, so thank you to those of you who have, have uh, been with us uh, watching this recording. Uh, if you want more information, have a look on the program page um, at liu.se uh, forward slash education. You can find all our programs, but you find the chemistry program there. Um, also have a look at our Instagram account, which is linkoping.university. Uh, um, it's run by our students. Um, so a new student has... Uh, every week there's a new student uh, and you get a really good insight into what it looks like here, what life is like. They do reels, you know, those stories and there's a lot of content. Um, we also have uh, student bloggers. I don't think we have anyone from chemistry, but um, from a lot of other programs in a lot of countries. And, and they, they have advice such as this, you know, and, and uh, how you kind of structure your, your application, making sure that you, you know, when you travel here or things that you should consider when you first get here. You know, there's a lot of really good information and that's at um, International Program Students at LIU, their blog. So it's a long name, um, but again, you'll find it on our liu.se forward slash education pages. And any question, just, just either contact us on the program page or just reply to an email you've already had from us. Um, with that, I'd like to say thank you to those watching the recording. Thank you. <laughs>